Good afternoon and welcome to the regular council meeting of Tuesday, May 21st, 2024 at 4.40 p.m. in council chambers and via Zoom. We acknowledge that the town of Kirkland Lake is located on the traditional territory of Algonquin peoples, including Beaver House First Nation and unceded territory of other Indigenous peoples. We recognize the presence of the Algonquin, Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Cree, and Métis people in our community since time immemorial and honor their stewardship and care of these lands. We hereby affirm our continued commitment and responsibility to reconciliation. Call to order in a moment of silence. Item number two, approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Vlad Shaba, be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of council held on Tuesday, May 21st, 2024, be approved as circulated. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number three, declaration of pecuniary interest. None noted. Item number four, petitions and delegations. At this time, I will welcome uh, Casey Desson and Anthony Boucher petition for allocation of backyard small flock pens in, uh, in the town of Kirkland Lane. Sorry, folks, you can just come right up to the podium. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. So we're asking for um, small backyard blocks of pens to be allowed um, in the town of Kirkland Lane um, to improve access to local and affordable high quality protein. Um, so um, as many of you know, we have record food bank usage in Kirkland Lane. Um, food prices have dramatically increased um, in recent years um, and contributing to food insecurity for many families. Um, hens produce local, affordable, high quality protein um, and also contrib have contributed um, to improving nutrition um, in many communities around the world. Yeah, chickens can also reduce food waste, um, thereby reducing garbage. Um, and chicken waste can be for, um, composted into high quality fertilizer uh, for use in gardens. Um, there are also many other towns and cities who have successfully integrated uh, small backyard flocks um, in their towns. Um, and um, additionally, there are some reports of um, caring for chickens, improving the mental health of people caring for them. Um, so what we're proposing would be a free or low cost permit system. Um, so for example, filling out an application um, and agreeing to follow the rules set up by the council. Um, and failure to follow the rules would be revocal, um, revoking the permit, um, therefore minimizing uh, the town resources um, to manage this. Um, so some of the rule suggestions um, would be placement of the Cooper enclosure. Um, so we suggest uh, like six feet um, from neighbors unless they have written permission, um, suggesting uh, that chickens are contained to a coop on the owner's property, um, the number of hens. Um, so chickens are very social flock animals. Um, so we need at least two um, to be allowed so that they have company, um, suggesting a maximum number, like maybe three to five. Um, also suggesting no roosters um, under the 12 weeks of age. So the reason for the 12 weeks is um, if people want to incubate eggs, um, which can be a great opportunity, educational opportunity, um, you don't know what the chicks are going to be until they hatch. Um, so having a rule like that would allow the educational opportunities um, without having roosters in town, um, they'll be making noise. Um, also suggesting having a maintenance plan included, such as uh, the cleaning frequency um, and this management uh, plans for the bedding and manure. Um, and then uh, also coop requirements um, for the well-being of the chickens, um, including things such as nest boxes, uh, dust baths, perches, uh, the space available, and horse food and water. Um, we have also supplied some of the uh, bylaws from other municipalities uh, that include these aspects as well. So some concerns that have been brought over to us from members of the public uh, when it came to signing the petition and uh, petitioning were um, concerns for smell. Um, we believe that smell can be controlled with low, low numbers of chickens, um, especially when it comes to cleaning on a regular basis, and it can be manageable in an outdoor environment, such as 
remove all the waste, whether going to landfill or going into bags. Um, another concern would be noise. And so we're proposing that no roosters are to be allowed as per the amendment to the um, bylaw. Um, hens generally produce very low amounts of noise and there's lots of other noise uh, noises throughout town, whether like just starting up your vehicle in the morning that are much louder than hen. Um, sorry, people who don't follow the rules. Um, I, we touched a little bit on this earlier, but if they're not following the bylaws, then the permit gets revoked. Or um, if any complaints come from neighbors, that it can be revoked at that time. And bears, um, there was a big concern about bears. Um, Generally, I haven't heard much uh, about chickens really attracting bears. There is a little bit of concern from individuals who live outside of the community. Um, from looking at a bear perspective, there's a lot of other attractants that are in town. <coughs> like that would be a higher, say, a higher profitable for bears to go after, such as berry bushes, garbage, um, bird feeders, um, things like that, apple trees. Um, Another thing uh, for having chickens, it can really reduce the amount of waste, um, food waste that goes to the landfill itself. So the amount of waste, it's been proven in other studies that have popped up uh, that uh, can greatly reduce the any amount of food waste that goes to the landfill itself. And we'd also recommend storing the chicken food um, in a bear-proof building um, to reduce access to the bear feed. Um, so, um, and uh, one of the other things I'd like to point out, um, a lot of people are concerned about people who don't follow the rules, um, but if people aren't going to follow the rules anyways, then there's nothing really stopping them from following the current rules that are set in place. Um, so that argument um, sort of falls a little bit flat if we kind of consider it. Um, so this would be a way to, you know, have rules for people to follow. Um, also, a lot of the concerns uh, that people brought up are like those lighter pages, uh, which are currently allowed. Um, but we also believe chickens would be less of a risk uh, because they lack flight abilities um, and wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. So that's reducing the chances of basically them going feral uh, like pigeons can. Um, and also provide a greater potential benefit to the community. And in regards to that, as for a lot of the other bylaws that are in place that allow for backyard hens, um, allow for about three to five chickens, uh, they do have a restriction to having them in an enclosed space and not having them open free range. Um, so like having a completely in close run. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate you um, coming and sharing this with us. Um, and I just want to thank you. I know it's kind of intimidating and I do appreciate your time. So thank you very much for engaging with us this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen, be it resolved that a delegation entitled Petition for Allocation of Backyard Small Flock Hens for Egg Production in the County of Lake be received for information. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item here unanimous. Item 4.2 Kirkland Lake Mining Heritage Historical and Cultural Revitalization Project, Beverly Rumble, Martha McSherry, and Adam Glad. Hi everyone, we're delighted to be able to be here tonight. Uh, we did do a petition, uh, which was actually a paper and pen petition as for the rules that are on the website for the Town of Kirtland Lake. And so far we have uh, 676 signatures on that petition, which we think is relatively significant for the length of time we've had to do it. Uh, so I'm just gonna begin at the, at the beginning of what I put into the notebooks that each of you has. And it's our deposition to Kirtland Lake Town Council. So we've got our title, which is Kirkland Lake Mining Heritage Historical and Cultural Revitalization Project, which is the title that we handed in at first when we were going to be doing that, which was the day after we had this emergency in Kirkland Lake with all the rain and your meeting was canceled. So since that point, we've had a significant uh, number of people coming onto Facebook interested in this topic. And we've called it TOLPAP, the Oaks Project Heritage, Art, and Tourism. So over 116 supporters so far. So why are we here are our main issues. We met on Monday uh, with Mayor Stacey White and with our, our CEO, Alan Smith. I was going to take that time to meet with us. And I must say to all of you, before we start on this, even though we've only got 10 minutes that we're allowed to talk, 
that you folks work terrifically hard. We recognize that. You've got some terrible issues that you're dealing with as far as funding, uh, things that, that take priority. I know that you did a survey recently in which you asked people how they prioritize things. And of course, the issues were, were snow, you know, uh, snow removal, uh, sewers and water, uh, uh, roads. These are all things that are up in everybody's mind. So of course, when you're asked to do a survey asking for those things, you put those first. And then, you know, you put arts and culture wherever. Often for people, it's going to be at the bottom of the list because they don't expect you to have to spend as much money on that. Um, but it's not that it doesn't matter to people. It does. They just naturally take it to the bottom of the list. So anyway, last Monday, May 13th, some of the members of a group of concerned citizens involved in the above named project, me, Beverly McChesney Rumble, and Black, uh, Mike Kemp, uh, met with Mayor Stacey White and CAO Alan Smith to discuss the issue of the town council decision to end the 60 year lease to 2041 with the Ontario Heritage Trust and close the Museum of Northern History as of September 2024 in its present home, the Sir Harry Oak Chateau. On the basis of advice given to our group at that meeting by Alan, the CEO, and Stacey, the mayor, we are requesting Kirkland Lake Council to direct your staff, namely the Chief Administrative Officer, Alan Smith, to designate staff who will attend meetings or a staff person that our group of concerned citizens will continue to be having with corporate entities who have expressed great interest in ensuring, in ensuring that the museum continues operating in the Harry H. Oak Chateau, such as Aniko Eagle, uh, Representative Adria Maillet, M-A-I-L-L-E-T, and Nico Eagle, Director of Corporate Communications. Adrian has assured Martha McSherry from our committee and Ron Calhoun that this is a project that a Nico Eagle and other mining companies, such as Alamos, could get behind, as it is so connected to mining heritage. Ron Calhoun worked in mine management for many years in the Kirkland Lake area and has connections to leadership in mine management throughout Canada. He contracted our group when he heard through the media that the museum was closing and connected us to Adrian at Agnico Eagle Corporation Corporate Communications. In discussions to date, Agnico Eagle has expressed interest in providing funding to take the burden away from the town and interest in assisting the Ontario Heritage Trust with refurbishing of the Harry Oak Chateau. They would like assurance that the town of Kirkham Lake will be kept apprised and have knowledge of our arrangements with corporate stakeholders who have expressed great interest to provide significant financing to keep the museum continuing in the Harry Oak Chateau, one of only three such designated heritage buildings in all of Northern Ontario. The Ontario Heritage Trust has already spent over $300,000 on the Harry Oak Chateau and has been raising more funds to continue its restoration. In March of 2024, Mayor Stacey White announced the Ontario Heritage Trust was providing $280,000 more in funds to refurbish the copper roof, porch, and balcony, and other things on the Sir Harry Oak Chateau. Plans are underway to commence this work, despite the town getting out of the, or trying to get out of the lease. The mayor and the CEO expressed that perhaps we could consider looking into a not-for-profit corporation to potentially enter into a lease with the Ontario Heritage Trust. Mayor Stacey and CEO Allen expressed in our meeting that staff designated to attend these meetings would function to provide reports back to council so they can be informed about developments in our fundraising efforts and problem-solving efforts. Agnico Eagle has suggested a possibility of taking over museum operating shortfall costs for five years, as well as assisting with refurbishing work done by the Ontario Heritage Trust. In our meeting on Monday, Stacey and Allen told us that they are trying to find other bodies to take over the lease from the town with the Ontario Heritage Trust. If Allen gets a staff member to report on the meetings to this council, you'll be kept informed on some possible great things to support and improve art and culture and heritage in Kirkland Lake at little or no cost to taxpayers. Adria May, Director of Corporate Communications for Amico Eagle, has informed us that funding for our project comes out of a different pocket than requests for infrastructure projects comes from and does not affect the amount available for infrastructure projects. So we're not in conflict. It is not a conflict with this council's attempts to access funds from Amico Eagle for infrastructure. We're informed at our meeting that town council will only be seeking funding for infrastructure, not uh, arts and culture. And they'll not be seeking projects to do with arts and culture in Kirkland Lake. We were told that the survey recently done showed that was the priority of townspeople who completed the survey. I completed that survey as well. Given a list to prioritize roads, sewers, and snow removal, almost all of us will put those items at the top of the list as a priority and put expenditures for art and culture near the bottom of the list. This just means we are sensible people. It doesn't mean that we think no money should be spent on arts and culture in our community or heritage. 
In 2024, Crypto Lake spent only 4% of its budget on arts and culture. That was the museum and the library. More than half of that going to the library. They still belong on the list of things that the town must support if we were to have a vibrant community that attracts and keeps people. Don't have paradise, don't pay paradise and put up a parking lot, which is what we are kind of leaning towards here. Okay? I hope that you request your CAO to have a staff a member report back to council about the development on corporate funding to keep the museum open at the Harry Oaks Chateau. I hope that you look at revisiting the museum situation again in the next five months when you can legally bring it up again according to council procedural rules, which say that the vote on that issue can't be revisited for six months. In the meantime, we've attached photos of the many, many worthwhile activities which have been happening at the museum over the last year and other papers pertinent to the discussion of the viability of the museum. We also included in our information the package, we want you to be aware as a council that we have a paper and pen petition as per council rules signed by, and actually it's now 676, we can change that number from 400, citizens of Kirkland Lake. This is in addition to the 7,000 signatures of an online position uh, that according to your rules doesn't count because it's an online. The creators of the petition are the same group doing the deposition today. The statement of pur purpose for the petition states, we the undersigned support the continuation of the Sahari Oak Chateau lease agreement between the town of Kirkland Lake and the Ontario Heritage Trust, and that we support maintaining the museum and the collection of artifacts in the Chateau. We are a group of concerned citizens who are very unhappy to learn that our Museum of Northern History is scheduled to be closed in September of this year, and that the town of Kirkland Lake is seeking to get out of the remaining 17 years of its lease with the Ontario Heritage Trust after having agreed to maintain the museum in the Sir Oak Chateau. We were dismayed that the vote to do so was done without prior notice at any time this year, nor was an opportunity for discussions and concrete proposals provided this year uh, for the parties directly invested in the museum and affected by the results of that decision. We are speaking about the Ontario Heritage Trust, who are learning through public media about the town's wish to get out of the lease, the Museum Advisory Board, Museum Auxiliary, the Kirkland Lake and Area Arts Community, and Council, who have hosted 15 yearly adjudicated art exhibitions at the museum, encouraging close to 100 entries this year alone. The Kirkland Lake writers who have sponsored lectures at the museum, the LaSalle Theater Group, who put on Shakespeare in the Park every year now on the Chateau grounds, or any of the countless people who have donated artifacts and time to making the museum in the setting of the Sahari Oak Chateau a gem in the Kirkland Lake community. I didn't mention here Bernie Jaworski. There are binders and binders of material that he has researched, researched and prepared as stories that are on shelves in the museum for people to be able to look at and do research in. And he's done hundreds of hours of work on that. Uh, there should have been public meetings recently this year prior to the town's vote in camera to allow members of our community to be aware of this impending threat and to have input of their thoughts about having the town revoke its lease agreement with the OHT and close our museum. I do understand there are other considerations for an in-camera meeting because we're discussing staff. Okay. Let's look at all the possibilities. The topic we wish to present at town council is a significant fundraising opportunity which has been brought to our attention that would enable the town of Kirkland Lake to honor its lease for the Ontario Heritage Foundation and keep alive and well for the members of the Kirkland Lake and area community, our town's art community, our town's history, and our celebration of the part that the mining industry has played in the lives of all of our citizens. We have been in discussion with the upper management of Benito Eagle at their head offices, and they have expressed great interest in putting significant funds towards meeting goals of the Ontario Heritage Foundation for renovations to the Sahari Oak Chateau and towards expenses the town faces in day-to-day -day running of the museum. They have suggested that we also get Alamos on board. We have heard that Georgia Pacific may also be interested in helping. They indicated that they have never been approached by the town council to help sponsor the work at the museum. They felt it is a good fit for the history of the mining industry and it is something that they could put significant resources into if the town will demonstrate its support. We are looking for permission from the town to include themselves in the process and investigate the possibilities with us. What are we potentially giving up? We have over 7,000 signatures in our online petition to maintain the lease agreement between the town of Brooklyn Lake and the Ontario Heritage Foundation. We have many more citizens who are continuing to sign our hard copy, hard copy petition in the town's designated format. And again, we changed that to uh, 676 signers so far. Uh, we have many townspeople who are appalled at the prospect of one of our few remaining town treasures being closed in the near future by a vote at a meeting that most people who would have wanted to know had no warning about. We're asking the town to consider with us the place the Museum of Northern History at the Sahari Oak Chateau 
has had in building and housing a thriving art community in Kirkland Lake with 15 years of juried art exhibitions with contributors from all over the world. We have art displays which change frequently and art workshops for children and adults. March was packed with activities for adults and children. Your figure of 3,000 to 5,000 people attending the museum is inaccurate because that just goes by paying visitors and not all non-paying visitors are counted as they go through the doors for openings or community events. Sorry, Mrs. Rumble, yeah. you're a couple of minutes over. I'm over? <laughs> okay, well, I've probably thrown in about as much as I can in there. But if you go online to the Facebook page for the Museum of Urban History, doesn't take much to go through and see beautiful posters and photographs and write-ups about all of the activities. And there are dozens of them that have happened. There's stuff every month that happens. Yes. Several things. Yes. So look at that. Thank you very, very much. Okay. I all really right. do appreciate your time. I know right. it's hard That's to, 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 That's to condense it in 10, 10 right. minutes. Right. That is a thousand words, folks, and you got about 69 pictures. There we go. That okay. sounds amazing. All right. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Okay. Madam Clerk, I'll have the reading and the motion. Can I get a point of clarification, please, first? Yes. So for delegations, what happens if we vote uh, against accepting the delegation? Nothing. It's just for information only. Okay. Okay. Madam Clerk, I'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Janice Franker, seconded by Councillor Vlad Chata, be it resolved that the delegation entitled Kirkland Lake Mining Heritage Historical and Cultural Revitalization Project be received for information. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried. Thank you. Moving on. Item number five, acceptance of minutes and recommendations, 5.1, council minutes. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Rick Owens. It resolved that council approve the minutes of the following meeting. Minutes of the regular meeting of council held Thursday, May 9th, 2024. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number 5.2, local and regional board minutes. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Lodge Shaba. She had resolved that Council received the minutes of the following meetings. Minutes of the Kirkland Lake Public Library Board held February 15th, 2024. Minutes of the Temiskaming Health Unit Board of Health held April 3rd, 2024. And minutes of the Temiskaming Municipal Association held April 25th, 2024. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number six, reports of municipal officers and communications. Item 6.1, 2022, audit and annual financial statements. Lloyd Crocker, President. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Community Council. Um, I guess we'll let um, Mark, I'll introduce Mark to you. Mark is the partner at Baker Tilly, who's responsible for our audit. He would like to take just a couple of minutes to present some items to you and talk a little bit about the audit. Perfect. Thank you, Lloyd. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for having me this afternoon. Um, so my presentation uh, is uh, essentially threefold. Um, I believe uh, Council has received in their board packages uh, the full set of audited uh, financial statements, as well as a comparative analysis, a, a PowerPoint, which essentially condensed some of the key points that uh, I wanted to include in our presentation today. Um, that comparative analysis also does have a benchmarking uh, analysis in which we're comparing some of the key ratios uh, that the ministry looks for within the municipalities, where we're comparing uh, some some ratios of the municipality of Kirkland Lake uh, to other municipalities, as well as uh, some trends uh, over the, uh, the past five years. And finally, the third uh, part of my presentation will be just a, a brief uh, discussion with council on our audit findings. Uh, maybe just one uh, brief question before I begin. As far as the presentation is concerned, would I be sharing my screen for that, or would that be okay? Yes, thank you, sir. We do appreciate you and your time. And if you could share your screen, we would certainly appreciate that. Not a problem. Currently, perfect. It looks like it's just been uh, uh, released to me. So I will share my screen. If there are any questions uh, throughout the presentation, please do not hesitate to, um, to ask. Um, are you able to see my screen? Does it show the comparative analysis currently? We are. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so as far as table of contents, as mentioned, we're going to focus just on a key, a couple of key areas uh, with regards to your 2022 audited financial statements, and then we'll get into some of that benchmarking that I spoke of uh, earlier. Um, so the first uh, slide that we have is our independent auditor, auditor's report, and we just took an excerpt uh, from our, our two, uh, two to three page report here uh, with regards to the opinion. 
Now, it is important to know that our audit report is uh, extremely similar to what you would have received in past years. There are really no changes as far as wording is concerned. What I would like to draw your attention to is that second paragraph of our opinion, which states that, in our opinion, the accompanying consolidated financial statements present fairly in all material respects the consolidated financial position of the municipal corporation, the town of Kirkland Lake, as at December 31st, 2022, and its consolidated results of operations and its consolidated cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. So a clean audit opinion uh, for your 2022 financials. So the first statement that I have up on screen here, and hopefully that's uh, large enough for, for you to see, is the consolidated, consolidated statement of financial position. So as at December 31st, 2022, financial assets uh, accounted for $24,114,745. That includes cash, uh, uh, taxes receivable, accounts receivable, as well as your user charges receivable. With liabilities, which include accounts payable, deferred revenues, uh, accrued interest, municipal debt, post-employment benefits, and compensated absences, as well as the landfill closure and post-closure liability. These amounted to $27.5 million for 2022 for a net debt of uh, $3,408,799. With regards to non-financial assets, which include your tangible capital assets, prepaid expenses, and inventory of supplies, these amounted to $118.3 million for an accumulated surplus of $114,859,187. Any questions uh, with regards to the consolidated statement of financial position before I continue? None noted. Excellent. Uh, so I'll move on to the consolidated statement of operations. So your revenues and expenses for the year. And we do provide some comparative details, uh, including uh, the previous financial uh, period uh, and the audited or unaudited rather uh, budget figures, which we've included for uh, comparison purposes. Uh, one note with regards to the budget, so we do modify some of these numbers for compliance with public sector accounting standards, So, uh, but we do provide some note disclosure within the statements as well that explains uh, why those numbers might be a little bit different from what you would have seen during that budget approval process. But total revenues uh, were for uh, $37,101,965, which includes primarily your taxation, user charges, government grants and other revenues. Your expenses uh, in general government, protection services, transportation, environmental health, social and family, social housing, recreation and cultural uh, services, whilst planning and development, amounted to $35,757,695 for the year for an annual surplus before other of approximately 1.3 million. Your other revenues include uh, government grants uh, for capital purposes, which we've uh, disclosed uh, between provincial and federal for uh, information purposes. These amounted to uh, approximately 7.2 million for the year for a total annual surplus of $8,513,127 or uh, uh, 027, pardon me. The accumulated surplus at the beginning of the year was approximately 106.3 million for an accumulated surplus at the end of the year of approximately $115 million. Finally, the last statement as part of uh, this brief presentation, the consolidated statement of change in net debt. This is simply an explanation of the net debt from one year to the next, uh, from 2021 to 2022. Um, this begins with the annual surplus that we've just seen on the previous statement of 8.5 million. We take into account or add back the amortization on your tangible capital assets of 4.5 million plus and minus proceeds and gains on sale of capital assets, um, less any acquisition of tangible capital assets for the year, change in prepaid expenses and inventory supplies, uh, which explains essentially the net uh, uh, decrease or, or uh, improvement upon um, the net debt of about 3.2 million, um, which uh, explains the variance in net debt from one year to the next of 6.6 .6 million to $3.4 million. I know that was quite quick as far as presentation. Are there any uh, questions before moving to uh, the benchmarking uh, component of the presentation? Yes, Councillor Shaba. Yeah, uh, to you, Madam uh, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Bologna. And uh, I, I've been reading here, it says uh, the company notes are a integral part of this consolidated financial statement. So where, where are the notes? Where can I find them? They're not in your PowerPoint, yeah. 
Very good question. So uh, the the summarized version uh, that is included on this PowerPoint just included the few pages uh, that we wish to address. The notes are part of the complete set of financial statements that would have been included, uh, I believe, as part of the package as well, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. You may continue. Excellent. Um, so the next part of our presentation is this benchmarking analysis, which I spoke of uh, uh, earlier, and we provide this to uh, all of our municipal clients as part of our annual presentations. We do take uh, some public information that is available through the financial reporting process to uh, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, uh, and we accumulate that information, put it into graph form, uh, just for some discussion or, or some thoughts uh, uh, for council or, or uh, to look at maybe any risks that maybe the ministry would be identifying when looking through uh, your financial information. And the way to kind of read uh, through uh, these, these graphs or these presentations, the left side of the screen would be the five-year trend uh, since 2018 through 2022 for uh, the town of Kirkland Lake as we look at uh, individual key ratios. And on the right would be comparisons to uh, various uh, um, neighboring municipalities of, of similar size or, or maybe similar uh, um, uh, types of uh, uh, programs offered by various municipalities that we've kind of compared to for 2022. And we can always modify this going forward if there are other municipalities that council would like uh, comparisons uh, as well. Um, so our first uh, graph here is the net financial assets um, and essentially, this is uh, your net financial assets, or in, in the case of Kirkland Lake, the net debt as a percentage of own uh, source revenue, so taxation, user charges, et cetera. What this might indicate would be um, if there's a high negative percentage, this uh, could demonstrate a lack of resources available for potentially future needs. But the key area that I would like to draw your attention to is at the bottom right hand corner, um, the ministry does provide some risk levels that they expect uh, um, for these set types of ratios. And anything in green is going to be considered a low risk. And the town of Kirkland Lake finds themselves in a lower risk area with regards to uh, their net debt as a percentage of own revenues. So we've also seen a trend uh, in, in a, a positive direction uh, with this uh, key area as well. So all positive uh, things uh, for, for this particular uh, ratio. Uh, the second ratio uh, that I have on screen for you is the total reserves ratio. Um, the way this is calculated is essentially your reserves or reserve funds as a percentage of operating expenses. What this might indicate is how much money is set aside for future needs or possible contingencies. Um, and again, um, if we were to look at the right-hand side of the, of the screen, um, Town of Kirkland Lake fall, uh, finds themselves in the green. Oh, anything over 20% would be considered uh, a low risk area. And over the past two years, um, that's been the case uh, for the town. The cash ratio uh, that I have next is essentially cash and cash equivalents as a percentage of current liabilities. And this would signify the ability of the municipality to address any short-term liabilities with liquid funds. So paying off any accounts uh, payable and accrued charges that typically uh, are, are paid off within a year's time. And once again, well over um, the, uh, the established uh, low risk thresholds by uh, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing at uh, 366%, well above that 10% uh, benchmark. Debt service ratio is simply um, the payments on debt divided by total revenues. So this is essentially how much of each dollar raised in, in uh, revenues is spent on debt. And as the town has been paying off its debt, has not been incurring new debt, we've seen a, a trend on, a downwards uh, on uh, within those percentages. And once again, uh, in the green, as far as uh, um, the thresholds established by the ministry. Just for context, uh, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing in, in 2018 established a, about an average uh, um, uh, percentage of about 4.7% for Northern Ontario municipalities uh, with populations between 2,500 and 10,000 uh, uh, people. The asset consumption ratio, uh, this is simply looking at the average lifespan of your capital assets, so your buildings, your water and sewer, et cetera, and kind of seeing how far along they are in their amortization or in their expected lifespan. 
there's certainly a number of estimates that uh, are taken into account in establishing these amortization rates. So that should be taken with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, but uh, the, the town of Crooked Lake does fall below uh, 50%, which the ministry views as, um, uh, as low risk. So essentially about just under halfway through lifespan on average. We do see a decrease from 2021 to 2022. That's largely due to a very significant acquisition in capital assets that was made during the year. And lastly, the operating surplus ratio. Um, this will vary from year to year. Uh, it is essentially calculated by taking the annual surplus divided by, again, own source revenues, so taxation, user charges, other revenues. Um, this would uh, demonstrate the ability to cover uh, operational costs, have funds available for other purposes, such as reserves, uh, debt repayment, et cetera. Um, as we had seen in the uh, um, financial component of the presentation, um, the uh, town of Crickland Lake had an operating surplus uh, this year. Um, so it essentially explains uh, the, the increase in this percentage, but uh, I'm gonna sound repetitive, but uh, you, you definitely fall into uh, a low risk area here uh, again this year for, for 2022, as far as uh, the municipal, um, the ministry is concerned. Um, as mentioned, um, if there are any benchmarking ratios or, or other municipalities that council would like to see in future years, we're certainly open to uh, making modifications and, and happy to address that. Um, before moving to my final component of our presentation, are, were there any questions on uh, any of these benchmarking ratios? None noted, thank you. Excellent. Well, <laughs> The last uh, piece of, of my presentation today um, is just to briefly talk with Council um, on our uh, audit findings for the year of, of 2022, the purpose of which is just uh, summarizing certain aspects uh, of the audit that we believe uh, to be of, of uh, good information for uh, members of Council. Um, now, as part of our independent auditor report, it goes into uh, quite a bit of detail on the various responsibilities towards these financial statements uh, that we previously presented. Management is essentially responsible for uh, the, the preparation and presentation of the financials. Us as auditor is to express an opinion on those financials and as members of council, they're essentially acting as a liaison between those two parties, uh, addressing any questions or any concerns that, uh, that might arise during the audit. Part of our audit process is essentially broken down into four different uh, steps. The initial planning stage, developing the audit plan, executing the plan, and then finally reporting and assessing the performance, which is the stage we find ourselves in today. As far as our audit approach is concerned, so uh, before we start our audit, we have to take into account um, whether we can rely on internal controls uh, within the entity or if we're going to take what's called a substantive approach. Substantive approach being uh, we go direct to invoices, uh, payroll timesheets, source documents for um, kind of building back up to the financials that are presented. Uh, I'm confirming to you that we did take a substantive approach to the audit. Um, it was just deemed more efficient for, for our purposes uh, to do it that way and not necessarily rely on controls. It's not to say that controls aren't in place. It's just for efficiency purposes. That's how we approached uh, the audit of the town of Kirkland Lake. With regards to audit risks and results, uh, no significant audit risks identified to bring to your attention. Um, findings from the audit, uh, we talked about our audit opinion was a clean opinion again this year. No new accounting policies were adopted during the year. As far as key estimates are concerned that we take into account, these would include landfill closure and post-closure costs, taxation revenues, and any related uh, allowance for doubtful accounts post-employment benefits and compensated absences, as well as your accounts payable and accrued liabilities. With regards to materiality, uh, for, for those that are maybe unfamiliar with the term, materiality is a threshold that as auditors, we determine uh, a monetary amount that if there were to be uh, discrepancies or errors that accumulated would um, exceed that threshold, that it would have a, a material impact or a significant impact to the users of these statements in making decisions going forward. So we uh, follow uh, accounting and audit standards to determine uh, that threshold. It's typically based off of uh, expenses for our municipal clients. So uh, 35.8 million for the town of Kirkland Lake. And we use uh, an upper range. So 2.75% of that 
to give ourselves a materiality threshold of 983,000. That does not mean that we uh, exclude uh, any transactions below 983,000 in performing our audit. Simply states that uh, in determining the level of work we do for the audit, um, that we use that threshold. We go significantly lower and we actually use a 5% uh, 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 trivial threshold, uh, if you will, uh, which would be about 49,000. So if we came across anything in excess of $49,000 um, during the audit that was not corrected in these financial statements, we would bring that to the attention of council. And I can tell you today that uh, any there were no amounts over $49,000 that we came across that have not been re properly reflected uh, in these financials. One of the last pieces uh, to quickly discuss is our independence. So annually, we're required to confirm our independence as a firm, Baker Tilly, as my, myself, partner uh, on the engagement, as well as members of my audit team. Uh, we are all independent of uh, the municipality of uh, the town of Kirkland Lake. Finally, as far as other matters concerned, uh, there were no significant transactions uh, entered into by the municipality that uh, should be made uh, aware of today. Uh, no significant matters arose during the audit uh, that were discussed with management and no disagreements. Uh, we request for management a written representation letter that simply signifies that all the information we needed for our audit uh, was provided and we did get a signed letter uh, back already. Um, and internal control recommendations. So we did not identify any internal control deficiencies that we wish to, to bring to the attention of council today, nor have we come across any instances of legal acts, fraud, intentional misstatements or errors uh, noted during the audit, nor were there any instances of non-compliance of laws, regulations. Um, none of those were identified during our audit either. With that said, uh, that essentially concludes uh, our presentation um, and I greatly appreciate uh, your time uh, and patience uh, 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 in presenting uh, your 2022 uh, financial. Thank you for your time, Mr. Belanger. Any further questions from members of council? Yeah. Councilor Shava? Yeah, uh, you, Madam Chair. Um, well, thank you very much for the presentation. I'd like to uh, go back to the uh, slides mm -hmm. because uh, there's always a uh, confusion between uh, operating surplus ratio and operating surplus. So I just, uh, maybe you should explain that a little bit because I don't think that's fair. Right. That itself, all the, this is 2022, that does not only mean that, that there was a surplus of money of uh, uh, 30 point, uh, what, uh, 30.46. Can you just uh, explain that uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, and please. Yes, certainly. So the annual surplus ratio is essentially taking the annual surplus and dividing by uh, the revenues of the year um, for 2022. And as I kind of briefly mentioned, it, it's simply just a, a, a ratio that indicates a possible ability to cover costs uh, and, and have funds available for, for future use. Uh, in 2022, in particular, the annual surplus um, was approximately, and if you just permit me two seconds to pull that uh, information back up, um, was 8.5 million for the year. And there's gonna be several factors that, that play into that surplus. Uh, in particular, one consideration, or maybe a, a key consideration to that, is um, based off of public accounting standards, uh, any grants received for capital purposes are recorded directly to revenues, whereas capital expenditures are capitalized to the statement of financial position. So if you were to actually take the annual surplus before uh, uh, that particular um, area, and, and this would be on your consolidated statement of operations, it's actually 1.3 million um where of, of annual surplus so given the size of, of the town uh certainly not an excessive amount of, of surplus but uh, certainly a, a strong financial position for the year the surplus um ratio that was presented um is simply just taking two numbers and, and they're going to vary uh, from one year to the next um it uh, and, and it certainly depends on what the future use of those funds would be um, as well that would be needed to be taken into consideration Thank you. Thank you. Anything further for members of council? Nothing noted. I'll have the reading of the motion. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I will have our treasurer continue. 
thank you, Madam Mayor, and Community Council. I want to thank Mark and his team, especially. Uh, it's a lot of work to, to build up to that two or three pages that you see here, see there with his his name and his company's name on. And uh, we really appreciate that effort. And uh, and again, thank you, Mark. Um, so there's a couple of things here I just want to point out, and one of them kind of speaks a little bit to, to Councillor Shabba's question. So on the financial statements, there's three or four things I'm going to talk about, and then We'll be, we'll be done if you don't mind. So we want to turn to the consolidated statement of financial position. It's, it's page one in the statements. <clears throat> so you'll see a couple of things that seem a little bit out of whack compared to prior years. So I just want to <clears throat> summarize it. Accounts receivable, quite a bit of an increase there. That is not a reflection of us struggling to collect receivables. That's really a factor that we had two very large capital projects. And at the end of the year, we were still waiting for the funding agencies to, to cut us a check. It wasn't a, an issue with collections or anything like that. It was a timing issue around our capital projects. It's, it's a similar comment on the accounts payable and accrued liabilities. So when you're running capital projects, some of these companies, you'd be surprised how long they can get an invoice. They can take to get us an invoice. You think they have it out the door the second they were ready, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So that increase in, in payables is primarily driven by the same um, issue. Uh, the landfill closure stands out because it didn't change. And that's based on an engineering study, which takes into account volume and some other estimates. So you know, no change isn't particularly shocking. Uh, it'll move up and down depending on how much we're using the dump and, and uh, how much we're, we're um, preparing for the future. You know, cells and stuff like that within the dump. Uh, on the next page, so the surplus, uh, you know, this is the PSAB surplus, we'll call it. It's the accounting standard surplus. It's, you know, why we spend an awful lot of time with accountants getting letters behind our names and talk about things that nobody else wants to talk about. Uh, we did have a surplus last in 2022. Um, it was primarily driven by the fact that we had a very large supplementary tax in that year. It was over $2 million. So you will see, um, and I'll point it out in, in a couple of minutes, we added $2 million to our general surplus, roughly, and it was driven entirely by that tax supplementary. So a tax supplementary is when uh, MPAC gets to a point where they say, yes, um, something's been built, a, a, is a building permit's been finished. We're going to add that property to the role. And in, in this case, because it's a specialized property, it takes essentially three years for them to go through their process and they backdate it. So that was actually three years of taxes <coughs> in an industrial property. So it's a one time benefit, bonus, helps us out quite a bit. Okay. Um, make things a little bit better for the future. It doesn't really change the type of thinking we have around our challenges, um, but you know, it was it was certainly a, a bonus for us. Um, page, sorry, should wear my glasses. Twenty five. So there's just a little. I'm not going to spend much time on this one, but this is a, a reconciliation of what we were just talking about for the budget. You'll see we, you know, when we do our budget, it ends up with a zero at the bottom. And then you see these statements and it's a wildly larger number. So this is kind of the pro, some of the things that change from the way we budget for, for our expenditures and revenues and stuff like that. And the way it shows up on the financial statements so that everybody can see exactly <laughs> what happened. And again, I just want to you know, point out that we, rent, we, we transferred just over $2 million into our general surplus um, as part of this process. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions related to the statements at this point that maybe you didn't have a chance earlier. Yes, I do. Councillor Shabba. Yeah, thank you very much, Madam Chair. So if I go to page two, and that's why I ask uh, uh, the auditor about surplus, because yeah. on page, page two, but we were the budget was actually uh, forecast to be in deficit, two point six million dollars. Am I correct? On page two. Uh, 
Period of amount of bear, you know, that doesn't include the capital expenditures. Oh, okay. and what I'm seeing revenues. I see what I'm seeing here is 2.6 million deficit, but we come up, we came up uh, 1.3 million surplus. Yes. So, uh, so this is really tricky for budgeting. So going ahead. So we just finished our budget for this year. So it's considerable that uh, we may be in surplus condition too. Who's that? So, so three, right. three Madam Mayor, Councillor Shallow. Yeah, it's without getting too far into the weeds. Um, we budget basically on a cash basis, essentially. We try we take into account how much we're spending on capital, how much we're spending on uh, extinguishing debt, how much new debt we're bringing in, the amortization that we're booking in the financial statements. We back all that out, and that's how we get to our budget. So that's all included here. And that one note I just pointed out kind of gives you a breakdown of why there's a difference. Um, the two million, like I said, the two million is, you know, it shows eight million here, but if you were to go back to our budget type of calculation, you would take off $9.7 million worth of capital expenditures. You would take off some debt expenditures. You would add back in some transfer from reserves and stuff like that to get to what we did for our budget. So um, there is a note with the actual numbers explaining how we got to these figures and why there's a, you know, so if you look at this, everybody in town is going to suddenly scream that, you know, if you guys are running this monster surplus, why are we touching tax rates for the next 10 years? And this is not a reflection of how we do our budget. The uh, Municipal Act allows us to prepare our budget differently from PSAP. Um, and again, you know, I, without disparaging my 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 profession, sometimes our financial statement presentations aren't necessarily the, um, spot on when it comes to the users of the financial statements. We tend to put an awful lot of time and effort into creating the uh, perfect uh, theoretical model. <coughs> I just have one more question, follow up, please. So I don't have it in front of me here. So if you can answer this, that's fine. Uh, if not, maybe you can go back and answer another time. So can you, uh, what is the trend here over the last five years of getting consolidated a financial report uh, whereby we have the situation whereby the, the operating surplus ratio is high? Do we have a trend, you know, like uh, this presentation just gave us something like uh, what, uh, 20, 20 something percent. So, do we, we have a five year trend uh, leading to this 2022? That's the latest that we've got now, right? This one. Yeah. So, through uh, Mayor yeah. Nelson Shawin. Uh, yeah. My short answer is no. Okay. okay. The previous year, 2021, was, was there was a bunch of factors that contributed to that surplus, and a lot of it was COVID and some extra funding we received. And of course, we had many of our operations were shut down. So, there was significant savings all over the place, which is kind of counterintuitive what we thought about COVID. Um, but, in, and then last year, and then in 2022, it's the, the tax supplementary. So going forward, you know, first blush, no, we're not gonna see these kind of surpluses. These will, it'll be much closer to break even, consistent with the budget. And, uh, you know, which I guess we kind of went through with the budget process to try and, you know, the budget process is actually pretty close, pretty accurate in getting to where we are, unless things like like that tax supplementary happened. If you remove that from the calculation, we're awfully close to what we budgeted. Anything further for members of council? Nothing noted? Madam Clerk? Certainly, Madam Mayor. Voted by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Rick Owens. We have resolved that report number 2024, Corp 28, entitled 2022 Audited Financial Statements be received, and that Council hereby approves the consolidated financial statements of the Municipal Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake for the year ended December 31st, 2022, and that Council hereby approves the trust fund balance sheet and statement of continuity uh, of the Municipal Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake and its reports for the year ended December 31st, 2022. And finally, the council hereby authorizes the treasurer to distribute the audited financial statements as required by section 2951 of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended. All in favor? 
Okay. Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Belanger, for your time. We do appreciate everything you do for our municipality. Thank Have you. a good evening. Have a great evening. Item number 6.2, 2023 Public Sector Accounting Board Reconciliation, Lloyd Crocker, Treasurer. Madam Mayor and Community Council, in my long winded answers in the previous presentation, I covered off some of this stuff here. <laughs> in this particular report. So, this report tries to is really a detailed calculation of reconciling public sector accounting board rules to our budget rules, budget the rules that we use to prepare the budget. There's much more detail in this one. There's a couple, I just want to point out, we always estimate our amortization and capital. And, and uh, I think you've heard me say capital is still, we still struggle to get our capital projects done. Um, hangovers from, from COVID and some other stuff and staffing and stuff like that. So, you know, these are, these are again estimates, but they're, if you were to look at the bottom number in this report, you'd see it's surprisingly close. I say surprisingly because it's previous year's budget compared to the current, uh, sorry, the current year's budget compared to the previous year's financial statements. You'll see they're both like $8 million surplus when the reconciliation is done. So, you know, give us a little bit of comfort knowing we're not off on some tangent somewhere. The reconciliation gets us back to similar to what we're seeing in the statements. Happy to take questions. Any questions from members of council? None noted. I'll have the reading of the motion. Certainly not in there. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Ritten Owen. We had resolved that report number 2020, and by the 2023 Public Sector Accounting Board PSAG reconciliation, we received. All in favor? Do you have a question? No, okay, just all in favor? <laughs> there you go. Those unnoted item carrying unanimous. Item 6.3, thanks to Lori for your time. 6.3, sponsorship request for AMPC grant application to the Tumiskaming Foundation. Sean Lacart, Director of Corporate Services. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council. I'm going to provide a report. Uh, Kirkland Lane Curling Club has applied for a grant from the Tunisian Foundation and have requested that the town sponsor the application. The town would then accept the funds on their behalf and uh, provide a donation to the organization for the same amount. Uh, the Kirkland Lane Curling Club submitted an application, um, which is included in the, the, uh, the attachment one, um, to the uh, Tunisian Foundation for $3,000 grant. Um, the total cost of the project is 83891 uh, the Kirkland Lake Crown Club has requested that the town sponsor their application to ensure it's, uh, it meets the Tennessee Foundation's eligibility criteria. Municipalities frequently assume the sponsorship role for application purposes. Uh, many of these organizations um, can only uh, only get the funding that they require to run their uh, their, their organizations from uh, from us uh, from municipalities sponsoring. Um, to ensure rules and regulations are adhered to, the Tennessee Foundation will, does have the uh, sponsorship agreements in their confirmation form, and they do require a report uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the uh, project. Um, I just uh, we had an update on the charitable sponsorship policy um, August 15, 2023, with the last report that went through, and we had mentioned that the administration would bring policy forward um, when we did uh, look start looking into research the, the policy. Uh, we did notice some um, uh, some guidance that was uh, in the under the SCRA, um, and it did say that the new rules uh, that may may allow charities to make grants to non qualified donees. So we 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 did did hold off for a little while to see if that was going to come through. Um, in December of 2023, under the new guidance, a, a registered charity can work directly with a non qualified donee. If the charity maintains direction and control of the activity under the guidance, non qualified donees would have to continue work for the charity's cause or activity. Um, from this research we've we've done, and uh, it, it does appear that uh, the non qualified donee will be using the, because they're using the giving for their own cause. Um, this doesn't quite fit under this program, so I think we will have to uh, continue to to provide sponsorships, which is fine. Um, uh, CEO Smith has uh, given administration direction to prepare the policy. Uh, this will be moving forward in the next couple of meetings. Um, the uh, the policy is important just to uh, so we can get something out and and uh, and and uh, and basically uh, you know give some training on on how the process works. 
um, a few of the last uh, few of the last uh, um, requests, um, the application had already been sent in, and uh, and they came to us a little bit too late to come to to, to council kind of thing. So we do need that policy in place to, uh, to have it followed. Um, there are no financial implications uh, in this. Uh, in this, uh, the, the amount received is offset by a donation of the equivalent amount to the equivalent club. So, administration does recommend that council approve the request from the curling uh, the currently curling club for the town to sponsor their funding application. Uh, the treasurer will direct any funds received by the town uh, before it as a donation to the same value of the curling club. Any, any questions? If anybody has any. Thank you. Any questions or comments from council? None noted. I'll have to read the motion. Certainly, Madam Mayor. Moved by Councillor Janice Rinker, seconded by Councillor Lon Chaba. We resolve that report number 2024, Corp 27, entitled Town Sponsorship with Bus KLC contribution <laughs> to the Timis Domain Foundation we received. And that council approves a request from the Kirkland Wood Film Club, KLCC, for the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake to sponsor an application to the Timis Domain Foundation. For a grant in the sum of three thousand dollars to support their condenser replacement project, and the council authorized the mayor municipal clerk to sign a sponsorship agreement with the KLCC as presented, and that council authorized the treasurer to receive any funds granted by the Timmins Foundation and to forward a donation of the same value to the KLCC, and find that an execution by law be brought forward for three readings on June fourth, twenty twenty four. All in favor. Opposed, none noted. Item carried unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Item 6.4 Commissioning District Community Safety and Well Being Plan Agreement and Update. Bonnie Safrider, Director of Community Services. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to all the council. The purpose of this report is threefold. So it's to provide you with an update with the Community Safety and Well Being Plan, to review a new memorandum of understanding, and to request a supplemental sum um, to pay for the next year's memorandum. So in a nutshell, the aims of the Community Safety Wellbeing Plan are really to make our communities safer and better for our most vulnerable populations. Very lofty. If we are ever able to achieve the goals that are in this plan, we will honestly be a much better community as will all our communities be in our region. So in terms of Kirkland Lake, we did adopt, we council, we, you, adopted a plan um, back in 2022. Mm -hmm. And then a, to follow up in 2023 in the fall, the um, a number of members of staff, mayor, council attended a kind of an unveiling of the plan in Inglehart. And that was a bit of a brainstorming session, a bit of an education session. At the end of that, the steering committee was struck. And the members in the room basically said, this is what we feel are the priorities in our region. So all 23, um, municipalities in our district are represented, as well as the, district, uh, the municipality of Tomogamy, which is often in the Nipissing district, but for this purpose is in the Tomiskany district as well. Um, the steering committee has representation from a number of different municipalities, and they're basically trying to determine how do we implement actionable items so that the goals are met. Challenging. Um, in terms of Kirkland Lake's role, um, so we've had great representation on both the steering committee and some of the action groups. Um, so Mayor White has graciously accepted a position on the steering committee to take my place. Um, Director Clockers will continue on the health and well-being working group. And Director Labrador is currently on the housing working group. So it's important that we make sure that we've got representation on the working groups to make sure that Cook and Lake's voice is heard. And this is very much a district-wide approach. Um, we have completed the first year of the memorandum of uh, agreement, and now this is what's getting brought forward to you tonight, is a two-year proposal. Um, this is done by the Chemiskeen Health Unit, so they are the organization that employs the plan lead. The plan lead is an individual who is the coordinator of everything. So without a plan lead, it would be very hard for the different members to try to figure out what the goals are, where we're going to go next, what our meetings are going to consist of, things like that. Um, so that's really what the memorandum of agreement is about. Um, if you take a peek on the, the uh, attachment, so it's the six-month report, that basically says in a nutshell what has happened over the first year of the um, memorandum of understanding and what the goals are. As I said before, the goals are lofty. I mean, they're really saying we want to increase access to health care. We want to provide 
housing opportunities for the most vulnerable. We want to address the root cause of poverty. So we're not going to achieve any of these in 12 months, 18 months, probably not 24 months. This is a long term. This was legislated when it came out. So it was legislated that municipalities must participate in the creation of a community safety well-being plan. The recommendation was to do it collectively, and we felt that collectively would be the most economical and the most fruitful way to do it. The legislation changed in April of this year, and it now adds that it has to be adopted, you have to report on it, you have to implement what's in the plan. So there's legislation now behind the fact that we have to move this forward. Do we have to do it in this methodology? We don't. We could take it on ourselves. If we took it on ourselves, I would suspect that we would have to engage at least an individual to work on this. So the cost would be much greater than the apportionment method. There is a cost to this, as you can see, it's about $25,000 per year for Kirkland Lake. Um, the other option is to do nothing. <laughs> um, what would happen then would be that the ministry could appoint a well-being planner for the municipality, and the well-being planner would have to, to the best of their ability, um, implement what was in the community safety well-being plan at our cost. So in terms of a cost option, we're doing the most effective. In terms of are we actually going to be successful, I believe this is the most successful option because we've got a number of municipalities around the table discussing all of the different options. So um, it is a hit on the budget. It is something that has to be budgeted for and reviewed, but I think that there is merit in the approach that's being suggested in front of you um, from the Chimiskeen Health Unit. And I think, fingers crossed, that there are going to be some positive results. All right, open up for any questions that you may have. Any questions or comments for members of council? Councillor Owen. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. I'm just wondering what happens when the health unit amalgamates with Timmins. Does this stay the way it is? Because right now, to me, this, this is looking pretty good at a reasonable cost. And I believe, if I remember correctly from our last meeting, that uh, CAO from DSAT is also on the steering committee which ties it all together with Mark being there mm -hmm. again. Um, so what happens with the amalgamation? Can we keep this? Do we know? Probably not. That be Madam Mayor to Councillor Owen. Um, I don't have the definitive answer. What has been alluded is that this is the Tumiskaming portion. This will continue on, and I'm not sure if uh, Councillor Owens, have, do you have any more insight into that? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> nothing more than you would allow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your knowledge would allow. There hasn't been discussions around the table regarding this specifically, especially funding. <clears throat> the merger is um, in its infancy still. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'd caution to even venture a guess. So, but thank you for that. It is something Thanks. that's on our minds. Yeah. Councillor Shaba? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Rob, to you. Uh... But I'm here. I get, I'm going to want to turn this question around in in uh, Porcupine or Shillings area. Do they have something similar to this, to the best of your knowledge? Because you're asking if we're going to keep ours. Right. I don't know. They have Maybe they have something similar to this. Uh, I don't know. Do you know? Um, to Madam Mayor, I do not know. I do, do not know what their format is, whether it's City of Timmins alone, whether they're working with outline areas. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. Anything further? Uh, just for my part, this is something that uh, the municipality didn't ask for. It's yet another thing that was yeah. dropped in our laps by the province. <clears throat> and I think this is the best case scenario. I think you've laid it out very, very clearly that I think financially, this is the wisest of all the alternatives. So definitely I 110% support the recommendation that's written. Madam Clerk, I will have a meeting in the motion. So the Madam Mayor moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. It resolved that report number 2024 CS4 entitled Timiskaming District Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan Update and Proposed 2024-2026 Memorandum of Agreement, UOC, and that Council authorized the Mayor and Municipal Clerk to execute a Memorandum of Agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake and the Timiskaming Health Unit. Each of the departments of work as described in section seven, identified in the Timiskaming District Community Safety and Wellbeing Fund, just CSWB, 
for the period of August 1st, 2024 to August 31st, 2026. And that council approved the supplemental contribution to in the sum of $7,195 being drawn from the working capital reserve for the 2024-2025 implementation of the Timiskaming District CW, CSWD plan. And that council approved the annual contribution in the sum of $25,519 from the Community Services Department's portion of the 2025 town, bu town budget for the 2025-2026 implementation of the Timiskaming District CSWB plan and funded that an execution by lobby brought forward for three readings on June 4th, 2024. All in favor? Opposed? Not noted. Item carried unanimous. Thank you very much, Director Sachs Ryder. Item number seven, considerations of notice of motion. There are none this evening. Item number nine, questions from council to staff. Sorry, Tara, thank you. Question, uh, item number eight, <coughs> introduction reading and no consideration of bylaws, none. Item number nine, question from council to staff. There were none submitted prior to council. Item number 10, notices of motion. Anything from the table? Uh, yes, I have uh, I, I have one that uh, I'm sure you want to check uh, that I'm here. Uh, to the town for, uh, you know, I'd like to maybe discuss that with the CEO before I put that on, just to uh, give it out. If you don't, can I, can I do that? Yeah, I would, so, are you bringing a notice of motion yes, right at this point? Motion, yes. For what? I'm bringing a notice of motion. Uh, it will be in two parts. One is uh, to ask the staff to investigate external sources of funding for the museum and for the staff to uh, investigate the... Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Go slower. Okay. <laughs> so, alternate sources? Uh, alternate external sources, sources of funding for the museum. And for the staff to also investigate alternate operating model for the museum. I don't know if that is, I don't know if that's so, that one on the CEO. So that is already occurring, the alternate, that's already occurring. Okay, I will strike that out. We'll keep the external sources. So alternate okay. external sources. So yeah. I don't know just a, yeah, just a point of order. So, yeah. so what you have done or what you are asking, goes against um, a prior decision of council. So I think before you bring that, I think you should actually speak to the CAO. That's what I said at the outset, I'd like to. Yeah, normally Lad, when you, you do this, you would have asked the CAO prior to what the, bringing the notice. Yeah, based on the information that so, I gathered to light, I, this is something that I thought uh, I wanted to bring forward. Uh, for what it's worth. So, again, I'd like to discuss that with the CEO as to the feasibility or, or whatever trial that I have to go through. I'm willing to discuss that, but that's what I want to put uh, as an answer on my motion. So, it may not even be a notice of motion because okay. the decision to divest was made by the whole. I get that. Yes, I get that. So, What I would like to have a fix to actually bring notice this evening and what they just okay. So you are bringing notice of motion, yes. That discussion, uh -huh. yeah. This is this is, yeah, Councillor Owen. Okay, yeah, just one I'm second. Point just, of order here. Yeah, Council made a decision, we voted on it unanimously, and this this cannot be brought back to the table for another five months. So I don't know why we're discussing this. Yeah. So, so there's no debate on the the, the yes the, the content of the notice. The councillor can bring notice. However, um, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, the councillor has to provide uh, the context for the motion for the future meeting. And at that point in time, it'll be determined whether or not it is germ if it's germane to the original. Um, decision of council or not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I? Item number 10.1, um, I will be bringing a notice of motion at the next regular council meeting 
regarding community beautification, item number 10.2. I will be bringing a notice of motion at the next regular council meeting, backyard small flock hens in the town of Kirkland Lake. Item number 10.3 at the next regular, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Item number 10.3, I will be bringing notice of motion at the next regular council meeting, Kirkland Lake Mining Heritage Historical and Cultural Revitalization Project as per the agenda. Do you have all that, Madam Clerk? Yes, I just want to re-clarify that it's alternate external sources of museum funding for Council Shuttle. Yes, that is what we said. Okay. Item number 11, Councillor's report, updates from members of council. Anything from members of council? Okay. <sighs> For my part, um, tonight is Bonnie Sackriders, the Director of Community Services, last official council meeting as a member of our staff. I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank her for the numerous contributions she has made over her long-standing career with the town of Kirkland Lake. Spanning more than three decades, you truly are a community builder. Uh, and though we will miss your warm smile at the table, wealth of knowledge and expertise, we wish you the absolute best, what life outside the public realm has to offer and hopefully the peace that that brings. So congratulations on your retirement. Uh, May 19th to the 25th is Public Works Week. This is an opportunity for us to express our gratitude and recognize the tireless efforts put forth by individuals who make up this entire department. Their commitment to maintaining and enhancing the infrastructure of our town is truly commendable. Their hard work often goes unnoticed, is often taken for granted, and definitely is underappreciated, but we do see every member of our staff and recognize their effort every day to make our community function. So thank you to Public Works for everything you do. Um, I will be returning to listing the actions taken by the Office of the Mayor bi-weekly. I do find it important to inform members of the public and fellow members of council what duties I perform to promote understanding of what a mayor actually does. Uh, though, of course, I will skip over the day-to-day -day answering emails, answering phones, you know, phone calls and whatnot. So, since last council, I have given opening remarks at the Ontario Mine Rescue Banquet, attended meetings for Planet Youth, Community Safety and Wellbeing, now Caucus, Library Board, and had two separate meetings with different individuals regarding the museum, one meeting with an individual um, regarding town beautification and community pride, fielded one phone call regarding the flooding issue and attended the flag raising event at the Kirkland Lake Detachment of the OPP at which I read the proclamation declaring May 12th through the 18th victims and survivors of crime awareness week. And on Friday, I gave a town hall tour to the grace three students of St. Jerome School. Bringing tours back to the town hall has been so well received by schools. <clears throat> Pardon me, I do hope this will continue for the next term. And that is it for me. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Lon Chava. Be resolved that the verbal updates from members of council be received. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimously. Item number 12, additional information, the proclamation. Whereas June is celebrated as Pride Month in Canada and globally, highlighting the importance of embracing diversity, fostering inclusion, and acknowledging the uh, significant social, economic, and cultural contributions of the 2S LGBTQIA plus individuals and our communities. And whereas during Pride Month, we honor the remarkable courage and resilience demonstrated by the 2S LGBTQIA plus people across Canada and recommit our efforts to preventing discrimination and advancing inclusion and acceptance for all members of our communities. And whereas Pride Month is an opportunity to celebrate progress while also acknowledging the ongoing challenges in the fight against discrimination and violence based on sexual and gender identity, and reminds us of the importance of advocating for change and continued education and awareness in the fight for equality. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Stacy White, the mayor of the town of uh, Kirkland Lake, do hereby proclaim June to be Pride Month. Thank you. I don't have a reading of the motion. So we moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Janice Ranger. Be it resolved that Council signed the proclamation for Pride Month, June in the month. Yeah, sorry, in the month of June mm -hmm. in the town of Kirkland Lake. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. I didn't hear unanimous. So I'll now take a 10 minute recess before moving to close. We are now reconvening after the 10 minute recess. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Bob Chaba, be it resolved in Council of Bern in camera, pursuant to Section 239 2 of the Municipal Act 2001, as amended at 6 14 p.m. to discuss personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. They were relations are including negotiations, litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local boards, and advice that is subject to solicitor claim privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. For the following reason, item 13.1, verbal update, corporate staffing, quarterly. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. We shall now move into open session. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be resolved that Council reconvene in open session at 6 38 p.m. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number 14 <coughs> matters from closed session. There are no this evening. Item number 15, confirmation bylaw, bylaw number 24 041. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Lawrence Shabba, be it resolved that the following bylaw be read, numbered, passed, signed by the Mayor Municipal Clerk, and sealed the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 2441 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of Council at its regular meeting held Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number 16, adjournment. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen, be it resolved that this regular meeting of Council. Do now adjourn at 6 39 p.m. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. Good night, everyone.